नमस्कार व्यूअर्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू दिस स्पेशल ब्रॉडकास्ट ऑन सनसेट टीवी आई एम टीना झा दी आसियान इंटर पार्लियामेंट्री असेंबली डेलीगेशन इज ऑन अ विजिट टू इंडिया करंटली लेड बाय मिस्टर कत्ते सीता बिंदी चीम याप द फर्स्ट वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द नेशनल असेंबली ऑफ कंबोडिया द डेलीगेशन विजिटेड द इंडियन पार्लियामेंट मेट विद रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स ऑफ बोथ हाउसेस आल्सो हेल्ड अ मीटिंग विद एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर मिस्टर एस जय शंकर एंड अदर टॉप ऑफिशियल्स ऑफ द कंट्री on this special program we will interact with mr yap about his india visit especially as it comes in the year which marks 30 years of india asean friendship mr yap thank you for your time welcome to sunset tv let's begin by talking about the significance of this visit because 2022 marks a significant landmark in our friendship 30 years of india asean friendship which we are now celebrating as the india asean friendship year and also how significant is this visit as it comes amid this landmark journey that we are celebrating thank you first of all on behalf of i part direct we would like to thank the sansar tv for the opportunity to share the outcome of our official visit of i part delegate to india we had a very productive and candid exchange of view on a number of issues of common concern we share the same view that asian and india partnership has grown from strength to strength cultural linkage people to people time and economic cooperation are the strength of our partnership we visit mark a new milestone in our comprehensive partnership as we celebrate our 35th anniversary of our partnership we agreed to further advance our partnership to a new level The missing link is a physical connectivity project the trilateral highway connecting India to Myanmar and uh, Thailand and the whole of Mekong region will be our flagship infrastructure connectivity project please uh, refer to our joint press release for more information once again we express our deep heartfelt gratitude to the parliament people and government of india for the warm hospitality and excellent arrangement we really enjoy your stay here thank you now i would like to give the floor to our ipa delegate to respond to the question from the press please absolutely so how has india asean uh, friendship blossomed over the last three decades which are the areas of cooperation and increased cooperation that that's being witnessed between both sides is something that we will continue talking to other members of the delegation as well for now mr yap thank you for your time it's been a pleasure talking to you hearing from you about your significant visit to india thank, thank you very you. much And joining me now are three other members of the ASEAN Inter-Parliamentary Assembly delegation who's currently visiting India. Uh, beginning with Mr. Vikram Nair to my right, uh, next to him is uh, Mr. Sanya Prasood, and uh, uh, to my left is Mr. Suhas Yara. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on this special broadcast on Sensor TV. So let me begin, Mr. Nair, by asking you about uh, the significance of your visit to India. How has the experience been so far? Uh, I think it's been a memorable experience. Um, met you know Indian MPs um, over the years, um, and I think this particular trip is significant because I think it's probably the first time since 2012 that a whole IPA delegation is coming together, and we've been hosted um, at the highest level. I think the Vice President and Chairman of the Rajya Sabha hosted us, uh, as well as the uh, Deputy Chairman. So it's been nice to um, you know meet senior politicians, and I think it shows. the importance that india places um on its relationship with asean and that feeling is mutual as you can see from the very big delegation we have here absolutely mr prasood uh, before i proceed let me first congratulate you because asean has just completed a landmark journey of 55 years significant one uh, coincidentally india completes 75 years and we mark 30 years of our friendship so 2022 that way is quite special 
give us and our viewers a sense into the history of how ASEAN was formed, how you've strengthened over the years, and how you face the challenges of the 21st century. Uh, in fact, uh, as you know that, um, especially I, I, I just would like to uh, mention about the relation between uh, a particular country first, Laos and India first. Then after that, I would like to mention about the uh, IPA. As you know that uh, Laos uh, and uh, India has a relationship uh, for about more than 50 years. And, uh, and the Indian government uh, recently has uh, support a lot, a lot of um, activities uh, for us, uh, especially uh, in the area of um, irrigation, education, agriculture, uh, and especially uh, we found that uh, you have a good pump, yes, you have a good pump, uh, which is very suitable for us for the irrigation, because our country is uh, uh, rice. We have a rice cultivation, and uh, we have a very good support from the government, Indian Indian government. And uh, other than that, also, I found that uh, when uh, we, as a member of the parliament, we uh, group as uh, reform as a uh, IPA uh, represent, and we have a relationship with uh, I India. I think it is a really good partnership. We want to cooperate. Uh, our ten uh, members country would like to uh, cooperate and uh, with Indian and with Indian people. We represent from the people. We would like to cooperate uh, with your government, with your people, in order to strengthen uh, the peace and the stability in the region and as a whole. Uh, let me come to you, Mr. Yara, because we are celebrating 30 years of India-ASEAN uh, friendship. Uh, how has our cooperation you know, uh, enhanced over the years, over the last three decades? Which are the newer areas of cooperation between both sides? Now? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is a very good uh, gathering. Uh, 700 million people and 1.3 billion people. So we are totally of 2 billion people meeting. So the two parliament meeting are very important. So a group of parliament, we call it one, but one unity in diversity. So we learn a lot from our trip here uh, and to celebrate the 30th anniversary between uh, Indian parliament and our IPA parliament. And we have a lot of cooperation. Uh, we have promoted up to the strategic partnership comprehensive uh, cooperation. So this is very important, give us the light for the futures of cooperation in terms of security, technologies, agriculture, innovation. So other many other things, as well as uh, we uh, don't forget that India is one of the largest democratic country in the world. So uh, this is, uh, we could learn a lot from you and especially we are ASEAN, uh, we uh, combine with many different believers in different religion, but of course the basic of the uh, uh, combination of democracy which start from the Buddhism council that we went to your Raja uh, Sabha and Lok Sabha. So we learn from a lot from that museum. We learn a lot from the library of the largest knowledge in the world. So this is cooperation can make our uh, two region become a good co cooperative and comprehensive partners, uh, not just between the people, but as well as we went to uh, back to thousand years of cultural civilization. So the two regions can become a sister civilization and could be connected through cultural corridor. Absolutely. You know, uh, Mr. Nair, I was reading somewhere that if ASEAN were a country, it would be the fifth largest economy in the world. India is the largest parliamentary democracy. Our advantage is the uh, huge number of youth, the democratic ad uh, dividend advantage, advantage window that we have for some years for now. How do you see this cooperation be uh, between both sides building up, and particularly in the newer areas, because we are both aiming to achieve sustainable economic growth? Yes, so I think there are many natural points where this cooperation can take place. I think the traditional angles have been infrastructure development, trade, um, and of course, um, security is also an important aspect. But I think sustainable development, um, it's becoming uh, more important in many different countries. And Singapore itself has committed to um, zero carbon emission from the government first by 2030 and then as a country by 2040. Um, so generally as you know, all these countries develop in almost every other 
um, country that has developed, usually your carbon emissions go up very significantly. So it's no surprise the two largest economies in the world are the biggest carbon emitters. So I think um, India and ASEAN, we have a window of opportunity because we can try to develop differently. But that requires, I think, investment in the right technologies. And if the governments coordinate on that, then it may be a way for us to develop in a different way. Um, but it's not an easy commitment because you know every country that develops faces these choices, right? I mean, to what extent do you clear, you know, for example, vegetation, untouched land in order to develop? Um, so these are difficult choices I think we have to make, but I think there's plenty of scope for cooperation, assuming there is political alignment on that. Certainly, and some improvement towards that has already you know, been in progress over the last uh, few years, Mr. Prasood. India has transformed its Look East policy into a vibrant and dynamic Act East policy, of which connectivity has been the thrust. How is it helping both sides? And in the future as well, what kind of cooperation can India expect from ASEAN countries? I think, uh, uh Thank you for the question. I think it is very important, uh, especially, uh, I mean, that uh, for the resource. <clears throat> because <clears throat> when we're visiting uh, India, we, I found that you have a pride, uh, a pride uh, stand for parliamentary uh, training, uh, research, research training institute uh, for democracy. So uh, this institute, I found that it is a very good institute. And it is, there is a place where for us, where we can exchange uh, our practice. And more than that is we, uh, there is uh, a good curriculum where we can uh, we strengthen our uh, MPs and our civil servant uh, to attend. I think uh, uh, while we uh, received some information in the past, um, I think there is a few uh, from Laos to attend uh, the course. I think uh, when we will return, we will try to somehow we'll coordinate with among the our uh, IPA country to uh, attend and send our staff uh, to attend in order to improve uh, our staff because human resource is very important. Uh, okay, Mr. Yara. Uh this was about, you know, the larger grouping and India's relationship. If we talk about India and Cambodia's uh, relationship, how can both countries work in different uh, fields to achieve economic and social growth? Yes, uh, economic and social growth is a part of the UN SDG, which is coming uh, to be realized by this coming 2030. <coughs> so Sustainable Development Goal is one of our key uh, people center. Indonesia, uh, India and uh, ASEAN, uh, we pay people center as a priority. So in order uh, for our two continents to cooperate, we will base on the free trade agreement. ITGA is uh, one of the important uh, uh, product that we can cooperate uh, based on the goods exchange and people to people, tourism and other scientific research. So most of, the, most of our two regions, we also understand the value and the cooperation among the Indo-Pacific outlook. So our Indo-Pacific outlook is one of the uh, 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 theory that ASEAN have their own uh, uh, architectures of their own uh, theory and uh, platform. And in India also create one of their perspective. So this could complement each other. We don't see it challenge each other, but it's complement to each other. So we'll be the best product for our two regions to cooperate. Okay, Mr. Nair, you spoke about you know free trade uh, agreement, and let me take a related question. How can both sides, in fact, how are both sides working towards the effective implementation of free trade agreements? Um, well, I, I think you know free trade agreements are always um, heavily negotiated. But I think um, India ASEAN concluded one in was it November twenty one? November twenty one. Yeah. So uh, you know, I mean, and there's a plenty of give and take in all of these things. Um, but I, I think that's a, that's an important first step. And, uh, you know, I mean, Singapore's always been very open, so we're happy to have free trade agreements with uh, any country that is interested. And I think we have one with ASEAN as well. So it's good that I think India is now on board. And the next step, of course, is implementing it. So that usually involves taking down tariff barriers for the different goods that have been agreed upon. Um, but the reason these agreements are so complicated is because people don't just want to let go of tariff barriers altogether, right? So you protect certain industries, certain segments, manpower. So, you know, but I think it's all moving in the right direction. So I, I think that was uh, an important first step. And um, hopefully, you know, the first of many, there'll be more barriers broken down with time. 
So ab absolutely, in the wake of these uh, newer emerging challenges and the changing geopolitical scenario, what are the challenges that you see, uh, Mr. Prasut, for our relationship? Well, uh, I think uh, for um, India, I think uh, we, 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 I, I think it is, is very important uh, that if we can uh, strengthen the, uh, the relationship and the, the partnership uh, between uh, ASEAN and especially in particular is IPA and, and India because uh, we found that uh, India is, is a big market for us. And uh, the second thing also that you have a good uh, opportunity for us, you have a good human resource uh, in area of technology. So I think uh, this can be uh, transfer knowledge, you see, so that uh, we can share the experience, we can share uh, some knowledge. Uh, and know, know that, that also if India investor come uh, invest in, in ASEAN country for us is the best opportunity for us and this would be situation. Certainly. So uh, our relationship has only go, uh, grown stronger, Mr. Yara. But uh, you know, uh, one imp question that I want to ask, and because you're all part of a parliamentary democracy, how do you see such parliamentary exchanges between countries? Help the youth of the country, help the part, uh, you know, that section of the society which has been unrepresented in democracy. So, in in a way, the messaging that India gives to the other countries as the world's largest democracy. And recently, you would have seen uh, we've elected our new president, the new vice president. Both of them belong to sections that have been largely unrepresented so far. So, that kind of messaging, how is it viewed in the other democracies worldwide? Yes, as uh, my uh, starting uh, message on, of this interview, uh, I said that uh, India is one of the foundation of the democracy in the world. Of course, but uh, the other thing we also share the view that uh, India have been uh, keeping their identity very strong in terms of uh, ideology, in terms of the interest and in sovereignty, and especially uh, cultural base value of India have uh, been performing to throughout the world. And we have learned a lot and exchanged a lot between our uh, democratic uh, organization uh, that help the, uh, to promote the electoral democracy or representative democracy. So our national organization have exchanged a lot of lessons through Indian democracy. And through those national election committee, India has been performing the best of the defend to defend the, uh, uh, what we call it, the n election democracy the election sovereignty. So these are the ones that we could share uh, among our younger uh, uh, politician, young population. So the initiative of cooperation, not just only sharing the democratic value among elderly uh, population, but we are sharing this to the younger population. So exchange of the young parliamentarian, exchange of the uh, knowledge and research, scientific, public health, so or whatever knowledge that we can uh, produce to the next generation are the key for our harmonization of the cooperation. Certainly. Mr. Nair, one uh, uh, aspect that I would like to touch upon is one of the important pillars of India's relationship with countries worldwide has been its diaspora. How strong is the Indian diaspora in Singapore? How are they contributing to the growth of uh, the country's economy? Well, I think um, the Indians have been in uh, Singapore and I guess the Malaya region for a very long time. So I'm third generation. My grandparents uh, came from Kerala. Um, but at the same time, we also have you know, um, new waves of um, immigrants coming in as well. And I think Singapore has generally been um, you know, quite open with you know, welcoming people who wish to be part of um, Singapore. Um, uh, and you know, I think the Comprehensive uh, Economic uh, Cooperation Agreement, or CICA, has I think facilitated that um, somewhat. Um, and I think the Indians in Singapore have played quite an important part in Singapore's history um, over the years. Um, you know, um, from inception to present, um, there have been many who've been involved in politics, in business, and that continues to be the case. So I think um, Indians continue to make important um, contributions. Um, just uh, about a month ago, I was at an event where uh, some people just set up an Indian Hall of Fame to recognize Indians' contributions. So I think they've been a very important part of Singapore's history and hopefully an important part of the future as well. Certainly. I'll take one final question, Mr. Prasood, from you. Uh, you've been here in India. You've uh, you know, met several dignitaries as well. You've also visited several of our monuments. What is one fond memory that you carry back home? Uh, 
I think uh, it's for us. Uh, we, we we found that uh, well, first speaking with you that uh, this is first this was a good time for me to visit uh, India, and uh, but it's the first time for me to visit uh, uh, the Parliament we just joined. Uh, very impressed uh, with the knowledge, uh, with the uh, quality of the work uh, that we have done so far, and I think. Uh, uh, this will be uh, a good and a milestone for us, you see, to have uh, some exchange, uh, some relation uh, between the IPA and the and EDN. Yes. So I'd like to thank all three of you for joining us on this special broadcast on Sunset TV and speaking to us on a range of issues about your visit to India, about how India-ASEAN relationship has progressed over the years and the future potential of our relationship. It's been an immense pleasure to have you all three with us on this special broadcast. Thank you very much for your time. Joining us now is another member from the ASEAN Inter-Parliamentary Assembly Delegation, which is currently on a visit to India, Dr. Fadli Zon. He is a chairperson of the Committee for Inter-Parliamentary Cooperation, the House of Representatives of the Republic of Indonesia. Thank you, uh, Dr. Zon, for your time and welcome to Sunset TV. Since you are you know, representing the parliamentary uh, uh, delegation to India, let me begin by asking you uh, the significance, the aim and objective of this visit to the largest democracy of the world. Well, actually, this is a very important visit of the AIPA uh, member countries, yeah, because uh, India is the largest democracy, as you said, and it marks uh, the 30th anniversary of ASE ASEAN and India, and also, of course, with the AIPA, ASEAN Interparliamentary Assembly. And I think uh, we have been a very close relation in many fields, uh, including for economic cooperation and also for regional cooperation and other, I think that's the most important thing now. Uh, as the ASEAN was established uh, to have economic, to help the economic growth of the region and also to uh, have, uh, to encourage or to enhance the stability and peace in the region and so on. So I think the cooperation and the relation ASEAN with India is very important and significant for us. So you know, while ASEAN and India are marking 30 years of their friendship and that's a significant landmark, if you talk about India and Indonesia relationships, they go back much beyond in time. The kind of historical and cultural connect that uh, India and Indonesia share. How do you look back at that journey and the kind of progress that we have made over centuries uh, to the kind of relations we enjoy now? Well, uh, indeed, it is very long history uh, and relation between India and Indonesia. Uh, we shared a uh, a very similar uh, cultural uh, background in the back to the uh, thousand years ago, <laughs> and uh, all, of course in the Indonesia at the time uh, before our independence, uh, once was the uh, center of Hinduism and Buddhism, but then uh, Islam came also, and uh, I think we still preserve the value, the history and this become our cultural capital and also the economic capital actually uh, to uh, maintain our relation with India. And India has a very strong support during the Indonesian independence back then in 1945, especially in 1947 to 1950s. Yeah. And our great leaders also had a very close relation uh, personally, and I think we have to uh, to see this as a capital, yeah. And as a capital, then we can develop more cooperation in the near future, especially in terms of infrastructure, manufacturing, and other uh, cooperation that benefit for both of us, because India now is the uh, the second largest population in the world, 1.4 billion. Indonesia is now uh, 276 million people. In ASEAN, I think approximately together 670. So this is a bonus demography that is very important in a, 
uh, as a market nowadays. Yeah. So globally, you know, uh, we, we know that India and ASEAN friendship and, you know, the, uh, the kind of ramifications that, that the current challenges are having on the entire region in terms of the peace and stability of the region is something that is concerning for both of us. How do you look at these emerging challenges and how are both India and ASEAN uh, preparing to meet these challenges, uh, which is in the interest of our people and our countries? Yes, uh, I think this, this is true we have faced a very challenging time and especially in the region also some issues that we have to address uh, together diplomatically and through parliamentary diplomacy is also one of the uh, way to find out uh, or find a solution about uh, these challenges and we believe that uh, with that cultural capital and political capital and the ASEAN way and the ASEAN centrality, ASEAN norms, uh, we can face together these challenges, you know. As one of the wise words said, if we dream alone, it's just an illusion, but if we dream together, it's the dawn of reality, you know. So if we can uh, maintain and strengthen uh, our cooperation, uh, India and ASEAN, I think we will have this new uh, reality and become a great player, important player in the region. Absolutely. In this uh, you know, um, interconnected world, no challenge can be faced by any country alone. And as you said, we are in this together. So any kind of challenge, which of course keeps changing with time, we all have to uh, work in it together, find solutions together for the larger good of the individual countries and of the region as well. That having been said, uh, Dr. Zorn, I'll have to wind up the discussion. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for Saturday. having me. Thank you for your time, viewers, as well. I'll see you same time next week with another dignitary. Until then, take care of yourselves and keep watching Sensor TV.